Hello, folks. Uh, I figured seeing as though we all have a little extra time on our hands, uh, we could learn a new song. So uh, I picked out Wagon Wheel. Uh, you uh, have probably heard it, uh, either the uh, Darius Rucker version of the song or the Old Crow Medicine Show version of the song. Um, both of these songs are in the key of A, um, but if you've ever looked up uh, chords or tabs for it, you probably noticed that, okay, you see a G chord and a D chord and a C chord. Um, well, they're actually playing with a capo uh, on their guitar, uh, and they're playing those shapes. They're playing the G chord shape, but it's sounding as an A. So we will be learning this song in the key of A, uh, and if any of these chords are new to you, we will be going over each one individually before we, before we get into the whole thing. All right, let's take a peek at what these chords are. There are only four chords in this song. There's an A chord, an E chord, which we're actually gonna play E7, an F sharp minor chord, sounds scarier than it actually is, and a D chord. And those are the four chords in the entire song. We're just gonna repeat those in a specific pattern. So let's take a look at that A chord. Uh, the A chord, uh, I'm gonna have my first string and my second string open. So the A string and the E string are gonna be open. I'm gonna hold down the first fret of the C string and the second fret of the G string, just like that. So I've got my index finger on the first fret of the C and my middle finger on the second fret of the G, just like that. And I'm just gonna strum all of my strings. And we have an A chord. Uh, E7, uh, I'm gonna have my first finger on the first fret of the G, middle finger on the second fret of the C, and ring finger on the second fret of the A string. like that. So if you see this song written out in the key of A, you're just going to see a regular E chord there. Um, the E chord is uh, perfectly doable. It's a little tricky. We could play the E chord like that. We could play the E chord like this. But uh, it just so happens that the E7 chord, which is a little bit easier to play, uh, sounds great uh, in this song. So um, we, can, we can stick to E7. F sharp minor. F sharp minor. Uh, looks like this. So I've got my index finger on the first fret of the C string, middle finger on the second fret of the G, and ring finger on the second fret of the E there. And I have my A string open up uh, right here. That's the string closest to the floor there, like that. Uh, another way that I could think of this chord is I could uh, take my A chord from earlier and just add my ring finger to the second fret of the E string like that. So we're kind of taking a familiar chord that we that we know, and we're adding one more note to it to make a brand new chord. So let's see what that F sharp minor sounds like. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. All right, and the last chord is a D chord. Now, there are two ways that I'm gonna suggest you play this D chord. Uh, the first way is like this. I've got my F sharp minor right here. I've got my uh, pointer finger on the first fret of the C string. Uh, I can just squeeze that up to the second fret of the C string and leave my other two fingers right where they are. I've got my fingers really clustered in there, but you can see that I am on the second fret of the G string, closest to the ceiling, second fret of the C string, and second fret of the E string. And again, my A string is open. And all I had to do was go from that F sharp minor and slide my finger forward just like that. Now, uh, one of the ways that we will normally play this chord uh, in other contexts or that you might see it written out in books is uh, first finger on the second fret of the G, middle finger on the second fret of the C, and ring finger on the second fret of the E, like that. Now, I think the easiest way to play this is to use both of those shapes depending on, or both of those fingerings rather, uh, depending on where in the song we are. So uh, let's see what this sounds like. So, me mama like a wagon wheel, rock me mama any way you feel, hey mama rock me. Okay, now that might have gone by a little quickly, but let's take a look at what was happening there. So I started on the A chord, 
working in first fret of the C, second fret of the G. And then I had to pick all my fingers up and switch them to that E7, right? Like so. So I went from A to E7. And then I had to switch my fingers around again. I had to lift them up and switch to get to that F sharp minor. And then I did that little slidey forward uh, to get from the second, uh, for, excuse me, from the first fret of the C string, slide up to the second fret like that. And again, get all my fingers in there. Look, you can see my finger in there. Oh, it's all, it's all smushied in there. It's such a small space. Uh, if this is, uh, if this is a little tricky, uh, you are not alone. This is, this is normally tricky for, for a lot of folks. Okay, so I've got that in there. Uh, but the second time that I play the D, the hey, mama rock me, like that, um, you'll notice that I'm using this fingering for the D. That's because I'm going to that D from this E7. When I'm going uh, from the E7, I can leave my middle finger right where it is, push my pointer finger forward, and then add my ring finger in there just like that. It's a, it's a different fingering for that same chord, but depending on where my fingers are uh, at any given time in this song, I can take advantage of being able to play that chord with different fingers. So, A, E7, F sharp minor, and D. And then we go back to A. The transition back to A is nice. All I've got to do is lift up my ring finger and slide my index finger back. And I'll do E7 and D again. And I've got that other fingering for D right there. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is just run through these chords. Uh, you've got the, the chord diagrams uh, on, a, on a PDF uh, that, that'll go along with this video, so you can take a look at that. There are also tabs um, with some suggested strumming patterns. So we'll, we'll take a look at all of those. Um, before we uh, go any farther, though, let's, let's uh, just kind of sing through the song. We're going to just sing through the uh, first verse and first chorus just to kind of get a sense of how this all comes together. So we've got a little bit of context. Heading down south to the land of the pines I'm thumbing my way into North Carolina Staring up the road and pray to God I see headlights I made it down the coast in 17 hours Picking me a bouquet of dogwood flowers And I'm hoping for Raleigh I can see my baby tonight so rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. Rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain. Rock me, mama, like a southbound train. Hey, I was keeping the uh, strumming uh, really simple, especially in the verses. You notice how I was just strumming once each time a chord happens. Heading down south to the land of the pines. That's a pretty good way to start any song, is just to, just to strum the changes. Just strum that chord once. Heading down south to the land of the pines. Whether you're singing along yourself or you're playing along with the recording. Um, either way, uh, it'll kind of give you a chance to slowly work your way through each of these chords and get comfortable with them, especially if they're new to you. But that chord progression is the same in the verse and the chorus. The only thing that I changed up when I moved to the chorus was I just started strumming more. Now, this is a, a, a nice way to approach things in a song where the chords don't change. Uh, we're going to change the feel, the dynamics, like maybe there are going to be points where we're strumming uh, uh, not slower, but we're we're hitting the strings less. We're leaving lots of space with uh, these long note chords, and then maybe we want to get more energetic to change things up in another verse. So start off simply, uh, let's take a look at the tablature 
and uh, see some of the different strumming patterns that we've got written out. Okay, so here on the page with uh, tablature and standard notation, uh, we are looking at some different strumming options that we have for this song. I've got three different patterns uh, that we can try out. And you'll also notice that I've got the uh, chord uh, diagrams drawn up at the top of the page. Again, just, uh, just for reference there. So we're gonna look at these three different patterns that we can try uh, for, for a chord progression. When I listen to this song, one of the most prominent features rhythmically uh, are the drums, that kind of kick and snare feel. It's very, very folky, very bouncy. So we have like boom, da, da, boom, da, uh, kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, that kind of feel. Um, and the rhythm that we play when we're, when we're strumming along can kind of mirror that and, and kind of uh, lean into that a little bit. So uh, this first pattern that I've got is I'm holding my A chord um, over here, but I want to focus on the, uh, I want to focus on my right hand now. So this is going to be some right hand work that we're going to do. So in pattern one, uh, you can see that I'm starting by just plucking the fourth string, my G string. That's the string that's closest to the ceiling. And I'll, I can use my thumb for that. Uh, sometimes I'll use my index finger, like so. Kind of. But my thumb works well as... So what I'm doing is I'm taking, uh, on one beat, I am just plucking that single string on the G and then I strum the whole chord. Like that. Now you can just have a ball just with that without even worrying about the rest of the song. Just hold that one chord. And again, you could try different things. You could try just using your index finger for that. Just use your thumb. You'll get some different sounds out of that depending on depending on uh, what you're what you're looking for or what's comfortable to you. So yeah, we start off with that A, and we're gonna basically continue this pattern throughout. We're gonna hit one note on our G string, and then we strum the rest of the chord. So for our A chord. And then we go to the E7 chord. And again, we could just hang out on this for a while and practice just playing this pattern right here. And we go back to that F sharp minor. there when I made that transition to that D. My G string was a little bit muffled up there. Again, I'm cramming a lot of fingers into a really small space, so it's not going to be a, a, a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise if you do get some weird buzzes if strings aren't necessarily ringing out the way they should be. Um, you might just have to adjust your fingers a little bit. That is totally normal. I've been playing this chord for a long time and it still happens to me, so no worries. And then uh, the next, uh, we go back to A. So again, we strum that G string from the whole chord. Then we go to E7. And finally we do D again, and this time we're gonna just play that D up for a couple measures. All right, let's kind of see what that sounds like in context. So I'm playing pattern one. It's the uh, first eight measures written out on the uh, page with the strumming suggestions. So the first two rows of tab and notation there. So here we go. One, two, 
three, four. got a pretty nice sound to it. Uh, we can try this with other chords if you're like, all right, these these chords are just not working for me. I just I just want to jam out on something. Uh, you can take the same concept and apply it to a C. And an F. So you could apply that to a song that you already know. I'm going to take a second here to tune. Let's take a look at pattern two. Uh, pattern two looks a little bit more complicated. Um, uh, we've got some uh, some notes with tails and some notes with dots. All right, we got some we got some stuff to look at. So uh, what we're doing here is kind of a swing feel. Um, I'm going to play it for you first, and then we'll and then we'll uh, work out what's actually going on. So that probably sounds pretty close to what you expect to hear when you hear this song, right? So we're going to be doing a combination of down and up strokes, like this. So I want to be comfortable strumming down and up, down and up. One and two and three and four and. Each measure is broken up into four beats. One and two and three and four and. And we've got those ands that come between the one, two, three, and four. Now, uh, you might have seen uh, on some ukulele websites like D-U-D-U -U, indicating strumming patterns. That's referencing downstrokes and upstrokes. So let's talk through what that would look like here. I'm going to go down, down, up, down, up. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down. Up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Now you'll also notice that my arm is going up and down even if I'm not hitting those strings, right? Um, I want to keep this going. My, my uh, right hand is my metronome. That's going to keep me steady. That, uh, that is going to help me keep my rhythm throughout this whole thing. So I'm kind of doing like, I'm going to count out the one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and one. So, so if I keep that steady count, one and two and three and four and, I want to hit the strings on one, two, and four and. So I missed the upstroke between one and two, and I missed the and of two and the down of three. One. There we go. One, two, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and four, and. Now, the other component to this is the swing feel. So uh, that's what that little symbol above uh, pattern two, where it says pattern two on the page, means. It's got the pair of eighth notes and it wants you to read that as uh, a triplet feel. So what that means is we're just going to stagger our notes a little bit. So if we have a pair of eighth notes, uh, that first eighth note is going to be a little bit longer than the other one.
So we're almost uh, getting uh, what we might think of as a bluesy feel. So that kind of uh, uh, idea, that kind of feel, that chunk, chunk, dunk, 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 dunk. And when we speed that up, uh, it kind of takes on a more uh, uh, folky or uh, even a Hawaiian-y kind of sound. Pattern three uh, is uh, probably going to be the simplest of them all. Uh, it's what we were. Uh, it's what I was playing uh, as an example when we first sang the song. Uh, it is all whole notes, so we're holding uh, these these chords out for an entire measure. So when I strum that A, I'm just letting it ring out for four beats. I could just count one, two, three, four, and then I go to the next chord, E7. One, two, three. Four, F sharp minor, one, two, three, four, D, one, two, three, four. Then we go back to A, one, two, three, four, E seven, one, two, three, four, D, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, so those are all of our elements for the song Wagon Wheel. Um, look up the song if you don't own a copy uh, and uh, give it a listen and try strumming along. So uh, maybe there were some new chords in here uh, that you can fiddle around with and, uh, and have fun. If you have any questions, please email me at tinyvillagemusic at gmail.com or if there's a song uh, that, uh, that you know you want to learn, uh, send me an email and maybe, uh, maybe we can do another video uh, on a song of your choice. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you are all well. Uh, take care.